Hosanna, blessed be the rock of our salvation, amen. And we know that that rock is our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, amen. I greet you, Calvary and friends, on this final Sunday of the year 2020. And truly, God has been good to Calvary, amen. I just praise God and thank God for all of you, all of our membership, all of the officers who are members, those who share in leadership. Thank God for all of you. We thank God for our office staff. We thank God for all of our partners in the community. We praise God for God's faithfulness in bringing us through another year and not just another year but the year 2020 where we have not sat together shoulder to shoulder in this room in this sanctuary since March of 2020 through this year members have been ill Members have lost loved ones. Folks have had financial difficulty. All kinds of things have gone on. And yet, we're still here. And we give God praise. I, I want to thank God for you and your faithfulness in giving. We were blessed to have our online giving set up right before the pandemic. We praise God. I want to thank our partners, our webmaster. I want to thank all of those who have worked. I want to thank First Lady Walton and all the work that she does administratively partnering with Sister Angel Bell and Sister Cynthia Blackman. We thank God again for Brother Terry Miller. And I want to thank God so much for Brother Chris Crane, the time that he has shared blessing us, music. I want to thank God just for all that has been done. I want to ask that you would continue to bless and give, and we want to get this work done with the beams, and thank you for your patience. We're going to get it done, and the building is going to look better than it has in a very, very long time, and so we praise God for that. As we come to the end of this year, I also want to draw our attention to God's hand in the recent uh, elections. Uh, God truly is a God who wants us to know him. And God demonstrated his sovereignty and is still demonstrating his sovereignty. We are living in a city, we're living in a state, we're living in a country that is more racially divided than I can remember. I know that some of our members old enough to have gone through Jim Crow in the South, all of the things that you suffered and you raised us and prepared us, and we love you and we thank you for that. But in these last four years, we've seen a deepening racial divide in this country. And I'm just grateful to God for the results of the most recent election. I never told anybody who to vote for. I've never done that. But I'm just grateful. I'm grateful, I'm grateful that God is still on the throne. And so I wanted to just share these things with you. I love you, Calvary. I thank God for you. This year, we celebrate, as we go into 2021, we celebrate 19 years as pastor and first lady and people. I want to thank Sister Walton. I want to thank our four children because they're in ministry, been in ministry all these years. And I want to thank you. God truly did put us together.
back in 2002, we're still together moving forward in the name of Jesus Christ. And so as we come to the end of another year, come to the end of this 19th year and begin this 20th year together, we give all glory to God. We say to God be the glory for the great things that he has done. Join me in a word of prayer, if you will. Father, we love you and we praise you. We pray right now that the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts together, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In the matchless name of our Lord Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, in the next few days, we're all going to be hearing a song that we look forward to hearing every year. It's a song, it's an emotional song. It's a song that a lot of people cry when they hear it. A lot of people smile and cry at the same time. A lot of people sit down and ponder and think about the year that has gone by. Historians call it the song that nobody knows, and yet we've all tried to sing it. Brandon Spector wrote a fun little article about it, and it's true. Many a New Year's Eve party has come and gone with people often emboldened by aged substances singing the first line of this 16th century Scottish song. I love that, emboldened by aged substances. That just simply means you had a few drinks. And then the rest is gibberish. Even without the aged substances, not a few are lost after the first line, yours truly included. But the song's been around for hundreds of years, <clears throat> and it's not going anywhere. We're going to hear it in just a few days. So here are the English lyrics. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and old lang syne? And then the chorus, for old lang syne, my dear, for old lang syne. We'll take a cup of kindness yet for all Lang Syne. There's a lot more to it, but unless you're bringing 2021 in in Scotland, you should be okay with this. It's a great song. It has a great rhythm to it. In the Western world, it is literally something people expect to hear at the stroke of midnight, even though they don't know the words. But as we probe further, we see that the song has deep meaning. The lyrics clearly include drinking alcohol, but there's more to it, much more to it than that. It's about friendship. It's about looking back for old Lang Syne, days gone by. It's a song that when you have lived and lost, gained and given up, tried to build a life, and buried loved ones makes you smile and cry simultaneously. Knowing Jesus is like all Lang Syne. So many say his name, but really don't know who he is. People of all races, creeds, and ethnicities, atheists and agnostics sing all Lang Syne. Likewise, people of all races, creeds, and ethnicities, atheists, and agnostics either say or have heard the name of Jesus. Yet, for many, just like Auld Lang Syne is just program noise at an expected time, many people say, hear, or even may sing about the name, but don't understand the power in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Well, so what, you may say? What can be done? <clears throat> well, in order for all Lang Syne to mean something beyond noise, we must know the lyrics. And in order for Jesus to mean something beyond the perfunctory, the church, the believers in Christ, followers of Jesus Christ, citizens of the kingdom of God, must hear a fresh 
and I knew the request of the Greeks who came to Philip when they humbly asked the question, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. My sisters and brothers, we are Judeo-Christians. J. Warner Wallace in his article, Cold Case Christianity, differentiates the understandings of Jesus among some of today's prevalent world religions. He actually deals with the question, who is Jesus according to other religions? To those who embrace Judaism, Jesus was Mary's son, teacher, had many disciples, was respected, was a miracle worker, claimed to be the Messiah, was crucified on the cross. To those who are Islamic, Jesus was born of a virgin. Jesus was to be revered. Jesus was a prophet. Jesus was a wise teacher. Jesus was a miracle worker. Jesus is under the authority of Allah and will come again, they believe, as a follower of Muhammad. The Buddhists believe that Jesus was an enlightened man, a wise teacher, a holy man. Hindus believe that Jesus was a holy man, a wise teacher, and is a God. While it is important to many people to know all they can about other faiths, and that is important, as we live together in human community and in, in the city of Milwaukee and in the United States, in the state of Wisconsin, in the United States of America, and further into the world, what is more important is that you know Jesus better than the lyrics, than you know the lyrics of all Lang Syne. You may never know all Lang Syne lyrics, but you should know that he saved you. And you should be able as we rebuild families in 53206 and beyond, you should be able to introduce someone to Jesus by simply explaining John 3.16. Listen, it is not you or I who do the saving. We do the introducing, the presenting, and sometimes the persuading as we rebuild, as we rebuild people. But at the end of the day, it is a person's response to the call of Jesus to be saved that allows them to take that first step. This coming year, let's preach the gospel and if necessary, use words. Let's introduce people to Jesus by how we live the life, how we walk the walk, by our actions, by how we actually live. All Lang Syne is about days gone by, but my Bible says Jesus Christ, the same, yesterday, today, and forever. One last thing, I, I don't think that the Greeks who came to Philip were so concerned about their past. I think they came because they wanted a brighter future. And as we rebuild families, we will only be successful as we do it in the name of Jesus. As I close this message today, I want to simply restate my one point. We may not know the lyrics to Auld Lang Syne, but we ought to know something about Jesus. I cannot deny it. You know me, you know I love Jesus. I love him because I know that he died for me. And I know one day I'm going to heaven. But until that day, I am going to love my wife and my family that he gave me and love his church while trying to let everybody I know come in contact, that I come in contact with, that Jesus is the only one who can turn lives around permanently. He is still the only one that can open doors that no one can close. He is still the one who can close doors that nobody can open. Do I have just one witness here? You may not know all Lang Syne, but you do know something about Jesus. It was he who brought you through this year when you went to the doctor not feeling well 
and didn't know how it was going to turn out. It was he who blessed you with a financial blessing at just the right time. It was he who forgave you and gave you a brand new start. Is there anybody here today who knows from experience that our God can give you a brand new start? Is there furthermore anybody who has decided in their heart and mind that 20 and 21, that they are going to follow Jesus more closely, that they're going to live in expectation, looking for him to bless? Is there anybody who's going to be more worshipful in 20 and 21 and give God thanks? Is there somebody that's going to decide to give God the tithe and give the offering and give back to God what God says in his word? Is there somebody that's going to try to help somebody like you have never helped them before? Is there somebody that said, I'm living for Jesus Christ. I'm going to shine the light of Christ in my family, in my life. Is there somebody that's going to stop being in a fixed mindset about what God is going to do and is going to say, you know what? I'm going to do my best, but I'm expecting God to move. Is there somebody today that's expecting 2021 to be the greatest year of your life thus far? Whenever you are contagious, Lord have mercy, about Jesus, it shows. Whenever you got joy, it shows. Whenever you believe, it shows. You got to live the life that the scripture talk about. You got to live that life. You got to get up in the morning or go to bed at night in prayer and seeking God's face because God has been so good. Is there somebody that's going to be a worshiper more so in 2021 than you were in 2020? Let me just break this thing down to y'all. Do y'all understand that over 300,000 people in the United States of America went to their death because of COVID-19 just this year from the time uh, that we stopped having church in terms of being together uh, in this room uh, that since that time uh, more than 300,000 folk uh, have died uh, but look at you uh, you're looking at me uh, on this video uh, we've seen uh, all kinds of horror stories uh, all year long uh, but look at you uh, you're still alive uh, and some of you uh, had those conditions uh, you had diabetes uh, you had cancer uh, high blood pressure uh, hypertension uh, and you still got it uh, but you still didn't die uh, God let you live. Uh, I look at myself. Uh, I know I've been exposed uh, to COVID-19, uh, but I'm still here. Uh, I thank him because uh, he brought me through. Uh, didn't have to bring us through. Uh, is there somebody uh, that's thankful uh, that you made it uh, one more year, uh, but not just any year, uh, a year uh, where body bags uh, were lined up uh, and semi-trucks uh, had so many bodies uh, that the funeral directors uh, could not handle them. Uh, but look at God. Uh, it's not because uh, we've been so good uh, that we're still here, uh, but it's because uh, of his grace, uh, his grace. Uh, say yes, uh, one more year. Uh, say yes, uh, yes, one more year to give God the praise. One more year, y'all, to give God the glory. One more year. Hallelujah. Amen. We may not know all the lyrics of Auld Lang Syne, but we ought to know Jesus and be able to tell somebody about how good he's been to us. As we close out, as we prepare, I'm excited about 2021. And as we close out, amen, Brother Chris Crane is going to close us out musically as we rejoice our way into the year 20 and 21 in just a few days. You're going to be hearing, uh, you're going to be receiving uh, uh, email uh, 
uh, because we're still going to get together as a group of churches and have watch night, but we're going to have a virtual watch night service, and you're going to be getting some information uh, on that uh, so that you can be able to log on and see messages from uh, the pastors uh, that we fellowship with. Amen. And there are going to be some musical offerings as well. And so we praise God for what God has done, for what God is doing, and for God, for what God will do. I love you, Calvary. Let's get ready for 2021. Amen. Thank you. 